So I can't even believe that Skidoo let this one out of the bag. I mean, this is a snowmobile that you guys are gonna be so stoked to see the walk around on. I mean, I'm literally like buzzing with anticipation because this right here is a 2000 Skidoo Touring E. And yes, this does have the blazingly fast 380 fan. It's actually a 369, but I mean, you don't need that extra 11 cc's because this thing's too fast on its own. I mean, you bring this milkshake to the yard and all the boys are coming out. No joke, all right? So it's said that this snowmobile will actually hit 57 miles per hour. Not lying, I'm not lying. That's, that's like, that's legit. It's said that it'll hit that. I don't believe it. I haven't done it and I don't have a radar gun to prove it. Don't even believe the Speedo because it's just, I mean, I don't even think it reaches 57 on the Speedo. That's miles per hour. I'm not talking kilometers. We're not talking Canadian digits here, all right? This is like, this is real, real speed. Being more honest about it though, or more serious, I guess I would say, this is an old school sled, but we don't talk much about old sleds. And you guys always say, how come you don't do long-term durability testing? Well, this would be really long-term because you're talking 24 years. This is a 2000. A little further than maybe you had expected. Nonetheless, it's a snowmobile that's in my fleet back home. I keep this thing in the stable for my kids because it's really hard to find a good kid sled that you're not gonna be upset if they bounce it into a tree, tip it over, or forget to pull it completely inside the garage and hit the garage door button, which may have or may have not had it happen. Uh, nonetheless, we did go through with Kimpex. We put some new parts on it. You're gonna see that build coming up, but obviously things like the windshield and the new plastic skis instead of the steel ones are some of those things that we've updated. But overall, what do you get of a sled of this vintage? What has changed between then and now? Well, it's still aluminum bulkhead and aluminum tunnel. That's pretty cool. This is the S2000 chassis. Out back, it featured the SC10, which gave you 10 inches of rear suspension travel. And up front, it's got the DSA uh, front swing arm, with the radius rods that delivers 7.7 .7 inches. And when you think about that, 10 and 7.7, 7, I mean, it's not that bad. When you compare this to an ATV, you're actually talking pretty decent travel for like a 500, 700 cc category ATV. It's not that bad. I know this isn't an ATV, it's a snowmobile, but I'm just trying to compare those numbers. Overall, one of the cool things about this snowmobile was that it came with RER. Almost everything up to this point had used the old school mechanical reverse that was really annoying and frustrating to use and you know kind of had to bump into gear and it was just heavy and awkward. Skidoo obviously the innovators of RER did what they do and put it onto this sled and it works great and it does exactly what it's supposed to. So electric start RER something handy to have for kids especially if you're looking for a snowmobile for them to be able to learn on you know that first sled for your kids who've got their snowmobile license and are wanting to get out there but you're just like man I don't want to give them a full-size sled yet with 600 class horsepower because they probably don't need it. Perfect size snowmobile. This thing doesn't go all that fast, but it still does get up and go. It's got the long track on it because it's the touring model. So it's got the big old two up seat on here. You can put two kids on here and they can go out and have fun putting around the yard, around the lake, wherever they're going or take it out on the trails because this will maintain trail speeds no problem. Like I said, we updated the front skis on it. So now they're plastic instead of the steelies. So they're not gonna rust out. Some of the more basic features on this sled, clamshell hood. I mean, that's what we've come to know it as. You can actually access everything on this snowmobile. I can change spark plugs in a whopping 45 seconds. That's like both of them. Try to do that on any modern sled. Most of them, it's a lot longer than that. There, you know what, there's some things as I've been working on this, as I did the trail tech, that, that were hallmarks and kind of brought me back. And I went, oh, dang, I remember my youth. I remember my, my childhood. I remember my young racing days with ZX chassis and S chassis and all these things. You could actually get to the motor. You could do a chain case change in a matter of no time whatsoever because there's so much freaking space under the hood. That's pretty cool. One thing we did to update on this sled also was the chain. We put a new chain on the chain case just to be safe. Overall, you know what? This snowmobile cost me uh, 2,200 bucks Canadian. When it was brand new, American, it was 45.99. Canadian, you're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of six grand. It's kept decent value, but at the same time, try to buy a $2,200 snowmobile nowadays that isn't rusted out, broken, needing a rebuild, you know, has 
a family of rats living in the seats, whatever it may be. And speaking of the seat, this thing's still pretty darn comfortable. Now, yeah, there is enough material here to probably wrap nine 2024 XRS seats. Who cares? It's, that's not what it's for. It's, it's meant to be comfortable for two people to ride on. It's meant to be, you know, enjoyable. The windshield on it, you know, when there's a nuclear fallout, just jump behind this thing and you're gonna be fine. It's big enough to cover the entire family from uh, any kind of radiation. So, I mean, you're good to go there. It came with mirrors on it from the factory. And if you squeeze too hard on the brakes, don't worry, the brake lever's plastic. It'll just break, it's fine. I'm actually, as much as I'm kind of cynical about this and, and joking somewhat, I'll be totally honest, I really like riding this. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face, but it's true. I actually like riding this snowmobile. I don't know what it is. There's just something about riding an old sled that works well. And the 380 fan, I mean, this thing's bulletproof. There's still 380 fans running around in the dirt in like a Callowit that won't blow up because they're just absolutely flipping bulletproof. I, I like going out and riding this thing. It's simple. Yeah, it smokes like a beast and it smells like a two stroke, but we were all joking right before we filmed this that we kind of, we kind of love that. <laughs> It smells really good when you're standing around it. Reminds us all of our childhood. And it's simple to use. There's nothing technical. The most technical thing on this snowmobile is, is pushing a button, whether it be RER or resetting the odometer. That's the most technical thing you have to do with interacting with this snowmobile. There is nothing else to do. There's no screens, there's no uh, programs, there's no, well, I mean, you know, launch control for sure. No, there's nothing on this thing. It's basic, but it works really well. It's fun to ride. My kids are gonna have a blast on it. They're gonna absolutely love it. And at the end of the day, it, it sort of throws me back to my first race sled was a uh, Formula S 380. And I raced that in the CSRA Canadian series. It was all red and, and I thought I had the world by the tail, man. That snowmobile was amazing. I remember the plastic brake lever on it and I remember breaking that plastic brake lever, but that was that was like that was my start in the snowmobile game was was a 380 formula s and i'm i'm just yeah i i this brings me back there so anyways at the end of the day you know what the the whole story that we're doing uh that's going to be coming up on snow tracks is about finding a sled that's cheaper so that you can give it to your kids they can go out and bang around and have fun and if they bump it into trees or get it scratched or rip the windshield off of it you're not angry because it really wasn't that much money. Sure, we still wanna keep this thing in good shape. We still wanna you know, not destroy it and, and take care of it. But at the end of the day, if something does happen to it, it's not that big of a deal. And that's what the story is about, is getting your kids out there, getting you know friends out there, having an extra sled in the garage, a, an extra pony in the stable that you can send out when a buddy comes up. And maybe this isn't the one that you know is the testosterone booster for your buddy who wants to go out and rip. But at the same time, um, if somebody hasn't ridden a snowmobile before, you put, you put a, a teenager on here, you put um, you know, a first time guy riding, you put on a first time lady, you put on a couple who've never gone snowmobiling before. This is really tame, it's really easy. And it reminds you, snowmobiling is a blast no matter what you're riding. You could be riding this or you could be riding a brand new competition Turbo 850 Skidoo. And both are equally as fun because it's snowmobiling. So I don't know, I'm getting nostalgic and I'm, starting to realize just how old I am because I'm talking about teenage kids and buying old sleds and something that's 24 years old and that was the first race sled I had. I feel pretty old, but at the same time, um, it's kind of awesome and I love snowmobiling. And part of the reason that I love snowmobiling uh, leads back to uh, an S chassis like this that just reminds me why I'm here and helps me to remember all the good times of snowmobiling, you know? None of the drama, none of the, oh, well, we don't have enough snow yet, we don't have enough snow yet. All those things aside, snowmobiling has, uh, you know, done things for me and brought me to the place that I'm at right now and given me an education in motors and fun and family and friends. And you know what? It all kind of leads back to the ass chassis all in all, because that's where my racing day started. and. This Touring E, I hope, can be one of those things that my kids look back on and they go, oh man, look at that old skidoo out in that field that's rotting into, well, it's not gonna rot because it's aluminum, that's, you know, completely destroyed. Do you remember when dad bought us one of those back in 2024? You know, that sled was 24 years old then and we can go back and do a nostalgic thing like I'm doing right now. But at the end of the day, 
this is a pretty cool sled. 2000 Skidoo, Touring E, RER, yeah. electric start, super high windshield, two up seat, perfect kid, perfect farm, perfect around the house, perfect at the cottage sled that you just get on and go. Anyways, here's a throwback. Dang it, I forgot to start it. Just, all right. I hope you got high fidelity uh, speakers because she purrs. Oh, let's, this is, ah, didn't even need choke. EFI, who needs direct injection? I got carburetors, baby. Watch this. Going backwards. Oh yeah.